This is the day that God is making. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning and welcome to worship. Welcome to worship in person. Welcome to any who are worshiping via live stream this morning. And a special welcome to any who have not been a part of Good Shepherd worship very much before. We've been expecting you because we are always expecting one another, the people of God on the journey of faith and life. Today is the Sunday in the church year known as the Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity is the only Sunday in the church year focusing on a doctrine. This Trinitarian multidimensional understanding of who God is. This morning, we will be invited to join in professing our Christian faith using the words of the ancient and ecumenical Nicene Creed, which is one of the earliest creedal formulations of the Trinitarian God. And in its words, we are invited to give voice to our shared profession as we declare, we believe, not I believe. I invite you to feel the countercultural dimensions of this shared profession of faith in this culture of individualism, and to consider the ways that this ancient profession connects us to those over many centuries who have gone before us, even when we in our time might choose some different words for, for professing the faith that beckons us to follow the way of Jesus. And as we have the gift of gathering in person in the midst of these extraordinary days, we thank you for sharing in our COVID care practices this morning. We ask that you wear your mask during worship and following worship. We invite you to hum the hymns rather than singing, as hard as it is to not add singing to your humming. However, I'll tell you later that next week, We'll be invited to sing. I'll tell you more about that later. A few other COVID details. We will not be passing the offering basket today, but your generosity is nevertheless a great gift. You can find the offering baskets available following worship in the narthex. We ask that you maintain safe distances from one another following worship. We invite you to do your visiting outside and not in the narthex after worship, and we invite you to spread out outside for those conversation locations. At the end of worship, the ushers will dismiss you, starting with the rows in the back, but of course, if you prefer to sit, stay in your pew during the postlude, that's just fine, of course. There will be coffee fellowship via Zoom following worship for those who are worshiping via live stream, and the Zoom link will continue to be open for a while if you'd like to check in there after you return home from in-person worship. And you can find that Zoom link on the church website. And so we gather as we live our lives in the name of the triune God, Trinity of love, who is creation's maker, healer of us all, and sustainer of the cosmos who is wisdom, word, and breath of life, who is the creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand for a time of confession. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard for us to believe that there is a master to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own indulgences rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us
beloved people of God, in Jesus, our love is widened beyond any vistas our eyes can see. By Jesus, our selfishness is turned inside out. Through Jesus, the bread of life, each of us is shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Thanks be to God. Amen. The gathering hymn is number 413, Holy, Holy, Holy. Welcome. I'd like to invite you to enjoy the place that you are sitting, remembering how God, how Jesus invited us to become as little children. So if we're not, wherever we are in that age and stage of being God's little children, enjoy the place where you're sitting right now. Speaking of enjoying, who, who knows that word? Joy. Okay. Good, good. And what's it mean? Something like happy, full of happiness within, in your heart, in your bones. It's deeper than happiness. Deeper than happiness. Thank you. Thank you. Joy is deeper than happiness. Let's remember that. A wonderful way to put it. I was riding my bike here this morning and I noticed on the way here that there were more cars in a lot of driveways that I rode by than are, uh, I usually see on a Sunday morning. I suspect that might be because it's Memorial Day weekend. Sound reasonable? So who, who maybe this year in a way we couldn't last year, who are you spending time with this Memorial Day weekend? Ah, family, 
friends, grandchildren. Maybe, maybe you'll um, take advantage of some of those razor clam digs together and you'll get to stick your hands in the sand over on the beach. Well, Memorial Day weekend is also a day where some of us maybe go to the cemetery and we remember people who died. That's very important that we do that together too. And however we come together this weekend, which is also Holy Trinity Sunday weekend, whoever we're coming together with, God is making a place where God's life and joy can be with us. Maybe we feel sad or lonely and God's life and joy can be with us. Maybe we're already feeling pretty happy and contented. Well, we just learned that joy is deeper than happiness, so God will fill us with just that much more. In all those places that we're together on this weekend. So I understand, I think I'm learning now, that you have a custom here where you do the prayer hands. Let's, let's just do that. You've got one hand, you've got two hands, you've got prayer hands. God, thank you for bringing us together in places where you can fill us with joy in ways that we never expected. Beyond our imagining, you fill us with joy, with those you give us to be with. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, 
a leader of the Jews, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Holy wisdom, holy word. One day, in the early spring, it must have been 2003, somewhere on the southern edge of the Eagle Cap Wilderness in the Wallowa Mountains, a little agricultural valley, I walked down the road before the sun was quite up over the mountain to the west and opened the gate to the horse paddock. I haltered up two horses, big 1,800-pound uh, draft horses, and led them into the harnessing barn. The air was chilly, and the horses still wore their winter coats. I led them up to the manger. To be honest, they leading me with their quiet weight and desire for the hay that was in the manger. It's hard to find quite the right word to express the name, the activity, the movement that a teamster undertakes in moving with 3,600 pounds of living, breathing horse flesh. I brought them several flakes of hay and as the horses munched their ration contentedly, I paused for a moment, leaning on the manger, standing between these warm, peaceful, powerful beings. 
And then the sun broke over the horizon, and it filled the valley. And suddenly I can say, like decisively, at that moment, I believed in the God of heaven and earth. I saw. I saw. And I was invited to enter in. I realize now more and more how in that moment I suffered a kind of birth that day, that morning, which would happen again and again. That chilly spring morning, I emerged with those two horses, somehow born anew into a life that was more than myself. As I went about the ordinary field work that day. And you know, such things, such things are happening even here, even now. It isn't always that striking, it isn't always that sudden for a person. But more of us, more of us, more people than are readily or commonly recognized by certainly secular institutions, and even many religious institutions, experience moments in our lives like I described in my life, or like you might be recalling right now from your memory or like we hear from the prophet Isaiah God's fullness God's fullness of being God's fullness of community God's fullness of love reaches out to us fullness of love reaches out to us. Isaiah saw. Isaiah saw this. Isaiah saw a garment far exceeding, filling the built proportions of the temple. Isaiah saw a six-winged, fiery being reaching out to gently touch his lips with a burning coal. He saw and he entered the presence of the mysterious, unseen God. This seeing, this beholding, this beholding, this seeing of God called, it invited Isaiah into new currents, new movements of life. Whom shall I send? Isaiah hears. Send me. There are times, sometimes overwhelming, sometimes barely noticeable, when we behold, when we see, when we see the crucified glory of God. In these times, we receive consolation. We receive encouragement. We receive invitation. We receive startling wake-up calls. We receive tears. We receive healings. We enter the presence. God is here. God is here for you, for us. And God, who is here, bears us, bears you more and more into the fullness of the image in which God has created you. If I may paraphrase Jesus as, as he speaks today in the gospel. No one can see. No one can enter the presence 
of this divine kinship of life that fills and shapes all things, even now at hand, without being born, without being born from above, born anew, born again and again. How can this be? (laughs) How can this be? Oh, here we are in 2021. Surely we're not talking about visions of the divine life, are we? How can this be? Nicodemus asks Jesus. How can a person be born again? This faithful Pharisee, learned and concerned in his heart to keep the faith of the God of Israel, asks this question when he approaches Jesus by night, a time of day when the light has been hidden from our eyes, and it is harder, at least for human creatures, to see. The Pharisees and Nicodemus, make no mistake, were devout and faithful. They sought to be faithful practitioners and teachers with a laser-sharp focus on the way of God. But like many of us, it seems that Jesus arrives in their life to expand their field of view expands their field of view, expands their picture of who God is for them even now. Nicodemus, who's one among a community, he's not alone in his asking, asks this question, how can this be? But he asks it because he and those with him have begun to notice They have begun to see. They have begun to wonder. Who is this Jesus? And what might he have to do with what God is doing now among us? They recognize something in Jesus, even if they can't name it or quite embrace it yet. So they say, so Nicodemus says, no one can do the signs you do apart from the presence of God. They see something. And Jesus, recognizing something coming to birth in Nicodemus, a work of God, a new work of God coming to birth in Nicodemus, Jesus replies, amen, amen, very truly, yep. I say to you, No one can see. No one can enter the fullness of the divine kinship unless that person be born anew. Amen. Born from above, born of water and spirit. In Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are born anew into the life of God. The fullness of that birth seeps into our experience more and more. It does so in sights of glory. It does so in tears that break our hearts open. It does so as it opens us within the limits and the gifts of our life, who God has made us to be, to be who God has made us to be. (laughs) This birth comes to us by water and spirit when we receive baptism and when we are nourished together at Christ's table. 
We receive this birth when our heart opens to the indwelling of the Holy Trinity, this community of love, this perfect unity that makes us one, that makes us one with God. And as we receive this birth, our mouths are opened and we say, Abba, Father. We say with the psalmist, My eyes are not proud. I have not considered things too high for me, but I am quieted like a child on its mother's breast. Because Jesus gives us, invites us, gathers us into this new life, this new birth that we have received and are receiving, this birth that brings us ever more fully into the life of God. So, on Trinity Sunday this year, 2021, surrounded as we are by mountains, by little glacial kettles like Ward Lake, where is that? It's over that way. Little glacial lakes that sing with the life that hovers over them at dusk and at dawn. On this day, as Jesus is gathering us faithfully, like a mother hen gathers her chicks, let us be reminded in word and in worship that God's fullness of life Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother, Sister, Brother, Breath of Life, has come to dwell with us. Let us join together in professing our Christian faith using the ancient and ecumenical words of the Nicene Creed, and I invite you to stand. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now take a moment to just look around us and share a sign of peace with one another. And at the request of our parish pandemic response team, we ask that you refrain from roaming and just kind of stand in place. So please consider a peace sign, a heart sign, or a gesture to those around you as we communicate Christ's peace, which binds us all together. I invite you to be seated. A few community announcements about this day. First, a special word, a daily word, and weekly word, a clear word, welcome. Whether it's Sunday morning worship, conversations about faith and doubt, study and learning about the Christian faith and life, actions of advocacy and justice making, or serving together in caring for the earth and all of God's creatures and one another. Welcome into this Good Shepherd community of faith and life. In the pew racks, you can find cards that we invite you to fill out if you'd like to share a prayer concern or if you're newer to Good Shepherd and want to share a bit about yourself or Sign up to receive church communications. Those cards can be placed in the offering baskets in the narthex after worship. On the Sunday page of notes handed out today and posted on the website, you can find information about how you can sign up for visits with me in the coming weeks. I give thanks. I continue to give thanks for these wonderful visits. What a joy it is to be getting acquainted. Two ongoing offerings of spiritual enrichment are described in the Sunday page. I'm leading one. Pastor Evan is leading one. You're welcome to join either of these at any point along the way. And lastly, I want to draw your attention to the fact that next Sunday, we will shift to gathering for Sunday morning worship outside in the amazing cathedral under the trees on the other side of the Good Shepherd parking lot. By so doing, we will offer even greater COVID safety for worship, and we will inhabit that green cathedral for worship for the first time in Good Shepherd's ministry. Here are a few of the details about next Sunday that you can find in this week's Sunday page newsletter. We will wear masks outside for worship but we will be invited to sing all the hymns. We are invited to bring our own chairs, but chairs will be provided as well. We have a rain plan. We will be, if we will be worshiping inside because of the rain, we will post this news on the church website by 5 p.m. on Saturday. We won't send it out by email. You'll need to go to the website to check if you're wondering about the weather. The newsletter also has some suggestions for how you can help 
to spread the word of invitation to these gatherings, this new adventure for Good Shepherd on the land and for the community in which we have been called to serve. Thanks be to God who calls us to gather around the gospel proclaimed and enacted in community and far beyond, living out the gift of being an inclusive and grateful Christian worshiping community, ever moving, growing, and rising to new life. On this festival of Holy Trinity, let us pray to our triune God, responding to each petition with the words, Holy God, we praise your name. We pray for your holy church around the world, revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. O oh God, creator, Christ and Holy Spirit, for the church we pray. We pray, that, we pray that the earth's mighty waters be cleansed, that cedars and oak trees be nurtured, and that wilderness be protected. Give rain to areas of drought and help us work to protect forest lands and lands where people live as we face a new wildfire season. Be with those who have suffered from the results of a volcanic eruption in the Democratic Republic of Congo. O oh God, maker, gardener, and keeper, for the earth we pray. We pray for the nations and our leaders, that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for the Israelis and the Palestinians. O oh God, fortress, monarch, and protector for the nations we pray. We pray that all people shun the use of violence and that on this Memorial Day weekend, in remembrance of all the soldiers and civilians who have died in warfare, humankind will, will maintain peace between nations on our streets and in our homes. Grant comfort and healing to all those who have been injured and those who grieve the loss of loved ones in the mass shooting in San Jose. Oh God, judge, peacemaker, and shield. For peace we pray. We pray that the pandemic end, that vaccines be fairly distributed, that the suffering be comforted, and that you visit those we name before you now. Gary, Kelsey, Carol and Bert and their family, David and family, Don, Mark, Donna, Paul, Spencer, Charles, June, Otto, Laura, Michelle, Steve, Brian, and Scott. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. O oh God, healer, mother, and nurse, for the sick we pray. We pray that summertime offer refreshment to everyone and rest, that dear ones find joy with one another, that travelers be kept safe, and that refugees receive refuge. O oh God, friend, companion, and homeland, for summertime we pray. 
And we pray for this worshiping community, the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, that the splendor of your vastness and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for our faith community we pray. Into your endless love we commend all for whom we pray, trusting as Jesus in your grace and faithfulness, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your, your kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us, give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Now go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Care for the children, the elders, and the whole creation. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may that Spirit so fill you this day that you go forth from this place trusting in our immense God, who surpasses all human understanding, yet whom we glimpse in the dance of creation and our interweaving relationships of love given to us by the triune God, Trinity of love. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 412. Come join the dance of Trinity.
in peace because God is bigger than us all. Thanks be to God.